Hello everyone, I'm Bablin and I welcome you all to today's webinar of DCEJ series presented by the Department of Development, Communication, Extension and Journalism. Stories. Stories form the heart and soul of our interactions. Isn't it amazing how they change the way we think and feel and how they inspire us much more than just facts? This is the theme of today's webinar. To traverse through the art of storytelling for brands, we have a very special guest with us today, Mrigashree Pant. To give you a glimpse of her journey, Mrigashree has been telling stories through audiovisual medium for the last seven years. She has been a film director working across long form TV content and short form digital brand videos. She directed India's first travel and magic series across four seasons which got aired on NDTV Good Times nationally and uh, Sony BBC Earth internationally. One of her films for the series Odd Jobs for Times Now got her the ICMA Award for the Best Nonfiction Content. A graduate from English Honours, Miranda House, and a postgraduate in mass communication from AJKMCRC, Jamia, she is currently working as a video expert at India's first and largest content marketing place called Scatter. Though she is based out of New Delhi, today she has connected to us directly from Bhimtal, her beautiful hometown in the hills of Uttarakhand. So without further delay, I think people are eager to listen to you, hear from you, Mrigashri. I welcome you on board and the space is all yours. Thank you, Bobleen. That was, that was a really sweet introduction there. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Mrigashri. And uh, right now I'm connecting with you, like Bobleen said, from the hills of Uttarakhand. So if there is, first things first, if there's a delay anywhere, um, in the network, if there is a lag in this story that we are going to be hearing for the next one and a half hour, uh, I'd really say just, uh, you know, uh, I'd be sorry for that because there are a few things not in my control. Um, so let's move to the idea and the thought of storytelling. I think one of the reasons we're all here um, is that because we love to hear stories or we love to tell stories. Um, what we're majorly going to be covering is storytelling in the format of brands. Why is, how does storytelling for brands happen? Why is storytelling for brands important? And how do we work around it? Uh, so let's look at the, the simple idea of why is it important to tell stories? Uh, Bablin, I'm not sure if you're really uh, projecting. There is a presentation I have, uh, which I, I mean, I, I usually, I'm not a very presentation oriented person, but then we just put it together so that, uh, you know, we could uh, make up for the lag of, yeah. Any uh, information. Like, yeah, yeah, this works. Okay, so what I'll do is, hmm, yeah. So let's talk about why is it important to tell stories, right? Mm, I think most of the conversations that we have with our friends, you know, at a very minuscule levels of what things we talk about every day, uh, to things we read, to things we hear, we're always talking stories. People always want to hear stories. Um, one of the reasons, I mean, very personally, why I felt that, you know, how storytelling really impacted me was I, ca I came from this little town and I was growing up here in the early 90s. And this was the time when we were not even very open to the internet. Uh, perhaps we had just the DD National Connection at home. And uh, one of the main things that actually, you know, um, that, that made me feel few emotions for the first time, that made me think about things for the first time were just stories. So what we would really do is that in the evenings, we just sit by the bonfire and, you know, just talk about things. And most of those things would be stories. Most of those things would be folk tales or, you know, just stories about one another. So story is, is something that touches every life. Uh, move on to look at the people who are not indulging in the idea of storytelling or the profession of storytelling on an everyday basis. They're still a part of stories, a very simple, you know, example of this would be WhatsApp forwards for that matter. The reason we want to push a story forward to somebody else is because we know this is going to be engaging. So most of the things and, and it, it serves as so most of the things that we actually push forward are actually, you know, because they give you a little bit of respite from the life that you're living every day. It opens you to new possibilities. It shows you there are so many verticals of life that you perhaps did know because there's one life you're living, but storytelling actually gives you 
this you know this this wide sky to actually go and um, experience so much more out there uh, and storytelling especially when you're talking of fiction content uh, is something that also works as therapy you know you, if you are an individual i mean imagine somebody who's working uh, morning to an, you know morning to night a 12 hour shift comes back home uh, goes to this little theater watches or you know just opens his ott platform watches a certain story you are disconnecting he's disconnecting himself from his everyday mundane life he's becoming a part of the struggle and the victory of the hero he's looking at uh he's sharing that emotion you know he's he's living a life with that um so that becomes th that is that is what the power of storytelling is and one very important thing when we come to brand storytelling is stories are forms that build trust um stories build trust between two entities that do not see each other it becomes a way of communication to actually be much more than a product so that's what we are really going to be looking looking at today how stories build this trust that we are talking about how stories communicate for a product that you want to put forward how stories make a product how how a, how a product actually becomes an integral part of your life through a story that's essentially what we'll be looking at in the next one one and a half one hour of what we have to say so look at so like i said stories build trust right um there is one thing that we say when we talk about brand storytelling is that a very good way to actually push forward your story is stop pushing your product uh focus on why you want to say that story for a brand um focus don't don't sell out what you want to say sell out an idea sell what is it that that story is going to be really saying because when you tell this story and explain you know what you stand for what your values stand for every brand really stands for something right you have apple standing for innovation you have uh, somebody like a surf excel who is standing for um, more humanitarian things um celebrating you have coca cola that's standing for more of happiness factor so those are the emotions that you give to certain brands and then how do you start selling the product through those emotions through stories that you weave around those emotions because then they become your values a uh, coca cola i want to buy a royal enfield because i feel you know that i am this freestyle spirit who is this uh, who wants to set on to an adventure right but has royal enfield given me that feeling or has the marketing or the storytelling around that given me that feeling so i almost become this tribe right with which is one with the value of somebody like a royal enfield uh, so what you need to essentially do when you're telling stories through brands is that you need to find that value in that brand right what is that value am i talking about innovation am i talking about togetherness am i talking about celebration of everyday life am i talking of protection just find that and you know find the people who share that value and then put your idea put your story forward what that does is it creates a trust which you can't ask a customer to give you it is something that you will have to build that you will have to grow and because stories become one of the ways the ad films you're making or the digital films you're making or whatever communication that you're doing around the brand becomes a way to actually for your product to speak to the customer that story becomes one of the main instruments that gets you loyalty from a customer because of the value that you've shared because i have gone forward and said that royal enfield is about adventure it's about discovering yourself possibly on a mountain top all the riders out there will be hearing me and talk and will be like oh yeah this is me this is this is being said to me if an aerial talks about you know they have a campaign that's come in very uh, recently i mean it's been i think almost a year they came up with share the load uh share the load is is if if you remember if any woman who has been washing clothes she doesn't get enough sleep and you know she's been washing clothes right from early morning and then you know this this chores don't end at all and then it brings in the idea of share the load uh so it suddenly clicks with uh, it suddenly clicks with people there it suddenly clicks with all the women who are in the house who are wanting that yes help should come my way my family member should be helping me cleaning or you know possibly doing the chores so that is what and then you suddenly you know then detergent goes uh, detergent just becomes comes in the background what's that woman who's seen that brand story there 
will remember is yes ariel talks about women like me this is my product i need to pick this up so that's how you build more on the values of your brands when you build a story on the value a certain emotion because a viewer is not going to remember the product there are 100 products and the viewer has your customer has the power to actually go out and pick up what he likes he's going to a mart there is a surf excel there is an aerial there are four other things there is a tide he will pick what he wants but if he has that recall value through the story that you have said which makes him remember that aerial ad made me feel was my story i could relate to what that was saying it is talking to people like me that is when you have clicked the right audience that is when you have become more than a product and become actually an emotion that is out there in the mind and heart of your customer so that they remember you when they are out there to make a purchase that is how you create loyalty so so what storytelling essentially for brands does is it creates the loyalty through the value that you get forward because if you just if you remember the ads in the early 90s uh when you know because after digital media has come in brand storytelling has actually completely revamped itself earlier we used to have 30 second slots in televisions and you had to quickly tell your story right this is ghari detergent this is what i have to sell or you talk about fena hi lena or you talk about any of any of the ads that you remember from the early 90s they were just talking about this is the product this is what it does buy it this was a simple story that you had to say now that is something that we are not doing at all because obviously one of the reasons is there is so much to consume there are so many brands and every brand has a story to tell so we'll come to how actually construct stories around that. So, like I said, now your values, the value that you push forward becomes something that makes you, makes your customers stay loyal. I'll give you an example of that. Uh, just last month, okay, and we're going to be looking at some popular examples or some recent examples that we have. Uh, when you're talking about values and how you create this loyalty, uh, just last month, it was Mother's Day and, um, very, very um, honestly, like the film industry has been really taken a hit because, you know, the ad industry too, because nobody's really going out for shoots. And uh, people like us have challenges to actually come up with new kind of formats uh, that should be working in this space when, you know, we're so restricted in terms of taking cameras out or shooting. Um, and this is a very interesting example. This is something that Access Bank came up with uh, for Mother's Day. And the idea of, you know, stop pushing your brand, but push an idea. Uh, so, Bubbling, there is this little link of four tips to keep passwords safe. If you could just play that on the second slide. Yeah, yeah, this one. So, this typical idea, you know, a lot of us are very um, careless with passwords. It just picks, and especially the mothers, um, a lot of us are now moving into net banking accounts, etc. So, it just takes up that insight and builds over that. I don't know if you guys can hear the audio I can't. One minute, so we are playing it. अपने बच्चों के नाम से माँ करती है थोड़ा एक्स्ट्रा ही प्यार। जब पति को बुलाना हो, अच्छी सुनते हो नेहा के पापा, या खुद को करना हो इंट्रोड्यूस बेटा पहचाना, मैं पिंटू की मम्मी। नाम तो बच्चों का ही होता है, खुद मंदिर जाती है, मगर पूजा बच्चों के नाम से ही कराती मॉम्स जस्ट लव देयर बच्चों का नाम बट व्हेन दे यूज इट एज देयर बैंक पासवर्ड फ्रॉड करने वालों को पासवर्ड चेस करना हो जाता है बहुत आसान तो चलो एक नया और स्ट्रांग पासवर्ड बनाने में मां की मदद करें और इस काम में आपकी मदद करने के लिए हम हैं ऑलवेज ओपन या Right. So now if you look at this ad, uh, the first thing that they're catching on is not Access Bank, is not Go Bank. It's what a mother does. The insight is something. Uh, we'll come to what insights are, but they actually pick on something that is, you know, that you'll relate to. Oh, my mom also does this. Uh, this is very relatable. Yes, I've seen my mother's password is also my name and uh, my date of birth. So that is what they picked on so that it it, it suddenly clicks you and say, hey, this, this is my mom, or, you know, I've, I've seen mothers like this. And then they build the idea of, they're again not saying that go bank with Access Bank. What they're saying is that, hey, when you're making your passwords, you're putting in names that could be not as safe for your account. Your passwords are 
you know, the names of your kids or whatsoever, could not be safe for your accounts. And then once they've given a message, once they've delivered a value, now you know that Access Bank is somebody who takes care of uh, how secure I am with my account. It is looking at if I am playing safe when I'm going forward for net banking, because mothers lately, I mean, you know, they're also playing on the insight of now a lot of accounts are actually moving to uh, being online accounts because uh, contactless transactions, etc. And their mothers are setting up this kind of a password. So they play on the idea of what is the value? What, what is that emotional approach to it? And then they say that, you know, then they bring in Access Bank in the end. So you will, even if you forget if Access Bank is what they were talking about, you'll remember, oh, there was something that they said, which was about passwords. And then when you finally get into it, you remember Access Bank through the story that they told you. So that's, uh, that's the power that storytelling has. That's the power that, you know, you can weave into the stories which you, even if you want to bring in a brand. Uh, they can still be as human, they can still be as relatable. So let's take a quick look at what, are, what is storytelling for brands, right? Now, if I have to, probably we can move to the next slide. Um, now, let's take a, I'll give you an, a, a simple definition for it, like, you know, a brand, brand storytelling is when you use a narrative to connect your brand to customers with a focus on linking what you stand for to the values you share with your customer. Now, there are three very key words here. We're talking about narrative, we're talking about what you stand for, and we're talking about values, right? So uh, let's move on to the next slide. So when we're talking narrative, right? Remember this, remember this, uh, we're talking narrative, what you stand for and values. When you're saying that you, storytelling is using a narrative to connect your brand. When you're talking narrative, you're talking about storytelling elements. Uh, your narrative is, let's say, the Access Bank one, which we just saw. The narrative is, you know, the, the whole story about the mother, the narrative. I think due to low bandwidth, uh, the video has gone. Um, so we can play a video that Nagashri was mentioning. Meanwhile, by the time the speaker joins us again. Rashi, you with us? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm back. Sorry, uh, I think there yeah. is there I just some think network issue from here. Okay. okay, fine. Yeah, yeah. So just let's come back to that slide. I'll quickly move to what, sure. what you are uh, sure. looking at. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. what you stand for, right? Uh, I don't know. I don't know until where you heard me, but what I was, because I realized it too late that this wasn't working. Uh, yeah. So what we're, saying is that you know when you think of a nike versus when you think of a woodland the moment i take the names of these brands uh you have a certain imagery associated with them and it's very diverse now what is the reason both of them also make sports shoes both of them also make loafers right but why is it that you think of two different things it's because the essence of these two brands is different uh it's about what they say to you and how they want you to perceive them that is different, right? Uh, and it's the driving force behind uh, what they believe in that is differentiating them from one another. Uh, Nike is not something, you know, all the brands stand for a certain kind of spirit. Nike, Nike doesn't stand for a sneaker or a sports equipment. It stands for the athletic excellence. It stands for uh, the sports star inside you. Uh, Disney, for that matter, doesn't, um, it doesn't stand for cartoons and parks and movies. It stands for family happiness as a brand. That's the emotion it's giving out to you. So every time you get a brand 
uh, brief, this is the first thing that you need to ask. What is that brand standing for? What is the value behind it? What is the emotion behind it? Then, uh, like I said, um, you have what you stand for to the values you share with your customers, right? The values you shared with your customer. Uh, why do you trust so much on an Apple or a Microsoft? Because the values that they share with you are that of innovation, of invention, of excellence, right? So every brand has a certain connect with you. There is a certain value that they come forward with. Uh, and that needs to be a part of your story. Uh, the character trait of what you stand for, of what your company defines, uh, the value that you stand for. So these three things together build up your brand narrative. Uh, where you have a narrative, where you're thinking of what my brand stands for, what is the value that it has in the life of my customer. If you've thought of these three things, uh, you're at least fine with the first step of telling your story forward. Now let's talk about, now what I'm essentially saying, let's kind of find an example of the same in um, two very similar brands, right? Uh, how do you create a brand voice? How do you look, how do companies like a Pepsi and a Coca-Cola, which are essentially selling one cola only, a uh, similar kind of cola, right? They're, they're, they're essentially selling the same product. How is it that you perceive both the brands as very different? While Pepsi, I mean, uh, I think we can just skip that now. Bubbleen was just playing something that has, that Pepsi has just done, which is Swag Say Solo. Uh, earlier before that, they were doing her good to my swag. Those were the brand films that were coming out, right? Uh, and Coca-Cola on the other side was doing something like Taste the Feeling. Uh, the very fact that Coca-Cola came up with those bottles where you had a friend or brother and all of, a mother and all of the things written. Um, now, a Pepsi, since in early 90s or even before that, I mean, from the time I've been seeing their television ads, have always spoken about being youthful. They always talk always about energy. Energy. They always talk about confidence. They talk about their, most of the, all the brand films that they do, they stand for everything that is fashionable and in with society. So right now, when they come up with something like Swag Say Solo, uh, the insight that they're working on is that, you know, there is a new trend that we see in the millennials. Uh, millennials right now are preferring to be self-partnered. Uh, so they, they, they underwent this research where they found that seven out of 10 men in the age group of 15 to 30 years are single. And the brand decided that this is what we want to work on. This is what we want to build the campaign on. That's why they get somebody like a Salman Khan, who is this icon for singlehood, right? So this is what Pepsi is playing on. Very, very, um, you know, trends which are new, trends which are in uh, with the youth at the current time. Coca-Cola, on the other hand, talks about uplifting, enhancing your everyday moments. You know, with their campaigns like Open Happiness, with their campaigns like Taste the Feeling, Share a Coke, they're all the time talking about enjoying little relationships, little moments, little happiness in life. Uh, so lately, I mean, in 2018, they came up with this, um, with this campaign called Share a Coke. I'm sure all of you must have um, at least, if not seen the ads, but bought Coke, which talk, which which had, like I said, best friend, father, all of that written on that. The essential idea that you know they wanted to build a storyline on that was that relationships in India were becoming um, informal as time passed. Right? We were we are not as strict with our fathers anymore. The fathers aren't as strict with us. There is a there is a little bit of ease in the relationship. There is a transition that's going. Uh, and they wanted to play on that. Uh, so um, so they, they, they came up with this ad. Uh, Bablin, if you could just play Share a Coke. Um, I think there should be a hyperlink there. No, no, the one before this, one before this. Just go on to, no, 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 just roll up. Yeah, Share a Coke. No, no, the other side. Under Coca-Cola? Yeah. So yeah, look at this ad, okay? They've actually looked at this little moment of how a father would and a child transition into a happy moment.
Yeah. So now if you see, there is a lot of difference in the communication of both the brands, right? Because one is talking completely on an emotional level, talking about relationships, talking about small joys, talking about little happiness, while the other is talking about celebration of youth. It's talking about that energy. Uh, so essentially, when you look at a brand story, brand story, your good brand story works when it goes beyond products and services. Um, a very good example of that would be something like a Surf Excel. The moment I say Daag Achche Hai, you know that I'm talking Surf Excel. What has Surf Excel done, you know, back, and this is what they're playing along with since 2005. Uh, back in 2005, when all the other brands which were talking about detergent were talking about Ziddi Daag, Surf Excel breaks the mold and comes up with Daag Achche Hai. It talks about generating em empathy. It talks about, hey, stains are good if they're teaching you a value. It's saying that even dirt is clean if it's teaching you humanity. And what they've very interestingly done is they've used very innocent stories. All of the Surf Excel ads, if you see, have children uh, as protagonists in a very simple slice of life situation, looking at how uh, stains are actually being being very instrumental in making them learn something important about humanity. So if that's why, you know, that's why they always keep saying that agar daag se kuch acha hota hai, to daag hai. So how you completely, you know, remold um, a brand that is actually about cleaning clothes into talking about something which is so human, that is where the strength of your story lies. Um, okay, now I'm going to be taking you know, I'm going to be showing you some examples now, uh, some of the films that, you know, we had lately done, um, and kind of tell you as to how we got into making that kind of a narrative, right? Um, so, Bablin, let's move on to uh, the slide number nine. So, it was around two years ago, um, we had a, yeah, yeah, we're good here. Around two years ago, we had a brief from uh, this brand called Dabur. Um, what they wanted was they had they had this product called Dabur Red Paste, and they had they had a product called Dabur Red Paste, and they had an event which was the Kumbh Mela. And what they wanted was uh, that you know we are and they were doing an activation. They were basically putting some stalls at the Kumbh Mela, um, you know, some uh, of of Dabur Red Paste. Uh, where people could go get the paste and you know brush there was a vending machine sort of a thing now they wanted a whole story around it because brands apart from doing the ads that you see and the commercials that you see on television or the digital films that you see you know which are mostly fiction because that's the content that's being shared mostly are also doing a lot of activation on ground activities that they want films around um so yeah, so we had this this brief. Now the thing was, our challenge at that point was that, you know, at the end of the day, it was Kumb. Thousand films get done on Kumb, right? There are so many people making so many things on Kumb every year. And on the other hand, you had this mundane activity of just brushing. Um, that is what you needed to build a narrative on. That people who are coming to Kumb uh, are just brushing, and you know, what do we do about it? Um, what our first steps to that was that we judge Dabur as a brand, right? You look at what Dabur stands for. Who are the people using these products? Uh, who is Dabur talking to? We realized that Dabur is a, especially with, with, with you know, a segment like a red toothpaste, uh, Dabur Red. They are a brand which is very massy. They are talking to, three you know, people living in three-tier towns. Those are the people who are buying this. So that, the first thing that did to us was, Okay, we need to have a narrative that talks to these guys. We need to have a language that needs to talk to these guys. We need to have a treatment and a format to the video that talks to these people. To, to the three-tier mass, three-tier Hindi-speaking mass in states like Uttar Pradesh, in states like Uttarakhand, Madhya Pradesh and around, wherever these... Um, uh, you know, wherever, wherever this brand was more prevalent. 
okay so now then you have to look into what these people like uh, do these people do they do, do they listen to more uh, hindi music do they groove to hindi music more or do they listen to serious kind of stories or do they listen to documentary uh, is this the kind of content they are watching we realized that the, the the crowd that we were talking to which is coming to kum which is doing radhaba red paste which is the crowd that will actually go all the way to a radhaba red paste stall and you know take the paste from there and brush uh, was somebody perhaps who liked just watching you know music and songs and uh, and and perhaps that was the easiest understanding to that person and then the challenge was how do you uh, make the mundane activity of brushing teeth interesting so we framed a narrative then so when we actually judged all of these things we said yeah a song is something that's going to work well in this market because kumb has already overdone in the documentary space a song is something that could bring light it's a very mundane activity of just brushing which is just a repetitive thing it doesn't have much to it so you needed to bring in some light elements you needed to bring in some joy you needed to bring in some fun to this activity of brushing uh everyone is not going there to brush but to actually bathe and take a dip in the holy water so you need to tell people that brushing kind of becomes an important activity somewhere around what you are really there for um and you needed to bring in you know for people to actually have fun with the video we needed to think about what are the main things that happen in the mela what are the funny things that happen in mela what are the things that people experience from a kids getting lost to you know being pickpocketed uh to eating so many things to you know basically just all the little things that happen combine them find what is interesting and how that can be a part of the story for your consumer how that connects to your consumer who's out there using this rubber egg paste and then we came up with um with this film uh bubbly i'd like you to play the film hello chat chat narayan hey yaar tere ki pe dhyan पावन नगरी में आपका स्वागत है सभी श्रद्धालुओं से अनुरोध है भैया कुंभ स्नान से पहले दंत स्नान प्रारंभ करिए साहब की गठरी को पुण्य में बदल आस्था की डुबकी में हम चले हैं कर करोड़ यहाँ भीड़ में है चलते पिछड़े हुए बच्चे रोते हस्ते मिलते मेले में भीड़ मिले संतों से ज्ञान उससे पहले होता पर एक बच्चा चट्टी में है चबा चबा के एकदम ठीक कर इसका भी ये बच्चा है एक नंबर ग्यारह से ले जाए दांत मजबूत बनाए मुन्ने को डाबर रेस पेश कराए कतरे भी हम भूले के भक्त काम के पक्के पर कानून है सख्त लाउड सभी कर से आती आवाजें अनजान व्यक्ति से करिए ना बातें मेले में भीड़ मिले संतों से क्या उससे पहले हो जहा पर भाई साहब दही जलेबी तो पेल दी लेकिन बात बोले पुदीना सौंकी और लो बनाए दांतों को स्टॉक संगम के तट पर साधु महान टकरा जाए तो this film you know what i where i want to go with this film is the idea of perspective um that you are given certain situations 
you are given you know a brand will always come to you with a brief with a product uh and at first you'll find it challenging that you know how do i say anything different with it uh the trick is that was what perspective you see to this uh some a space like kum could well have been uh, a documentary and just about this um you know this this um the red paste stall that they had there but what we decided was no we wanted to make it more fun uh we wanted to say a lot more about kum we wanted to make it catchy we wanted to make it something that people could remember um and that's the perspective we took we knew we had to go a little desi with it that's why we got a voice from I, i mean i don't know if you guys could recognize it this is the voice of uh this very popular red fm rj who usually does nand kishore red beragi so that's that's the voice and you know and he could play because he's from he's somebody from that area uh he could play on those words he could play with the, the certain lehja we were talking about um and then we were very sure we wanted to keep it light we wanted to keep it fun because this is a mundane activity but needed to be done in a fun manner uh, so that again so those are the things that you've got to decide and you've got to keep to them uh, you know your film has to have that tonality uh, if you want to take the lighter route uh, if you want to make it sound fun if you want to make it sound happy interesting celebratory so even like a simple act of brushing becomes a celebration at kumbh mela because that's what you do before doing your because dan snan is what you do before doing kumbh snan so it almost became like you know um a certain activity that we were offering that needed to be done before you actually go forward for your holy dip now this is something that we did in a light tone um there is so i'll give you an example of how perspectives change right there is something that a, a brief that we had some time ago uh from excite life excite life was doing something in terms of they wanted to talk about helmet safety uh and uh they wanted to say that you know we want to tell people as a csr initiative that it's important to wear helmets and we saw some of their campaigns that they were doing and those were simple narratives of yeah you know wear a helmet it's important etc nothing was hard hitting uh when it comes to something like wearing a helmet uh we thought that what you wanted to what we wanted to go ahead with was creating the fear of not wearing a helmet what happens when you don't wear a helmet and we didn't want to do it through you know reconstruction and of events and possibly do in any other way we wanted to do it through real stories we wanted people to be shown a mirror uh that look this is what you are left with if a simple activity of wearing a helmet is something that you fail to do this is what your family suffers because the person who goes goes this is what is left behind this is what your family may be left behind with uh if you you know choose to possibly not wear a helmet uh this again was a perspective thing you know um so and and i'm only talking of some of the successful campaigns like uh when i was talking about kum kum was something that garnered 8 million views and was perhaps some you know dabbers one of the most successful campaigns of that year this again was something considering it was a csr activity this film itself had like 3 million views and plus um and these were and and these worked well for the brands because you know brand will always come with a certain idea they have in their mind uh they wanted us to be very preachy with or uh, this excite life campaign about helmets they wanted to say that no we want you to keep harping on the fact that oh, it's very important to wear helmets etc but we all hear right all of us know we want that it's important to wear helmets has it ever hit us that bad i'm going to just but we'll just play like 10 seconds and you know if anyone wants to watch it we can later share uh, the links so i'll just show you the initial 10 seconds of this hello sir yeah <laughs> Hello, sir. Check the URL. Oh, is it not opening the link? It should yeah, be a somehow. Facebook link, I'm guessing. Hmm, I'm clicking uh, on. Yeah. Okay. Clicking on. No, let it be. Let it be. I can. I can possibly then share it later. 
Yeah, so I'll just tell you what we did with it. We actually opened this film with the time when these two parents who've lost their son who's there in this picture are showing me this picture or uh, this album that they have because I was interviewing them. And, uh, you know, they're talking about all the times when they spent, like they say, this is when we left him at the hostel. Uh, this is when, this is what he used to do. He didn't like getting pictures clicked with me. And then they come to this particular picture, which is a thumbnail here, and then say, this is our last family photograph. Uh, and you know, then you take off from there. And you all, by this time, you've already felt the hollowness that the family is feeling through your shots and you know, just how the camera moves around the house, just how they show the lady going into this her son's room every day and the kind of emptiness she feels there, doing nothing because nothing changes in that room, just her going around, uh, you know, walking, standing on different parts of the room. That's the only movement that the house, house has. It's all standstill. There is nothing else happening. So again, the perspective to the camera, uh, how you're showing that holiness that lady is talking about, um, how, you know, and, and how that hits. Because essentially, when you're talking about storytelling, it's, and especially a lot of times when we're doing nonfiction, because I keep, I do a lot of nonfiction. Uh, what you're essentially trying to do is that, you know, I go to this location, I know what my character is feeling, and I know how I want the script to be like. Now, my job here becomes how do I translate it into a film that you watching feel the same emotion that I did while I was there? That's what the art is about, right? What you feel, what you, or how you feel when you conceive an idea. How through techniques can you actually translate that into the same emotion in your audience's mind. That's, that, that would be the job done. Uh, so in this film, like I said, we wanted to take the perspective of your, we wanted the perspective of what your families are left behind with, how that feels. And we did this with the real life, uh, with, with the real family. So it, I mean, even shooting then kind of becomes very challenging because you're actually opening the wounds of somebody, right? But you have to do it in a way that they feel and you feel right about it. Uh, and, and then you're kind of connecting it with the brand. That's why you have to be very cautious as somebody who is out there directing or taking the creative lead of a project. You have to be very conscious of the fact that am I being true to the story that I'm trying to say? We're talking a lot about brands. And that's where you have to be a lawyer with the brand. We have such instances 100 times on a day when we are sitting there to justify why we want to do what we want to do, why we want to take this stand in the film. Uh, because a brand would always want to push this forward. But you are the creative mind. You are the creator. You are trained to tell stories. So how do you say this story in a way so that the brand understand that my purpose is fulfilled, yet you still have a story that clicks well with the audience? Uh, that's where the job is. So um, I think I could sometime later share. Another thing on perspective, there is something that we did and I, I'm telling you this because, you know, all of most of this is branded content, except for the one that I'm just going to show you. This is something that we've done on for times now for Zoom TV. Uh, there was a series we were doing for 10 episodes uh, called Odd Jobs, which was talking about the most odd jobs in India. Uh, and one of the episodes uh, was on nude models. Again, a very challenging premise because, you know, to find them and get them to be in front of the camera was something really uh, a lot of back-end work actually went in there. A lot of trust building went in there because I am meeting this certain individual for a four-hour shoot or a five-hour shoot in a day. How do I bring myself to that level that this individual trusts me to tell the story of his life, uh, the most vulnerable parts of his life? Uh, he doesn't know me. We've not met for more than two days. Uh, then how does that conversation build up? How do you put yourself as somebody who is harmless to her, who is inquisitive and respectful of who she is. So I actually, like for this particular one, we had two, three days of shoots, uh, two, three days prior to the shoot, I would meet her regularly. Uh, I would just chit chat with her. I would take her to restaurants. We would talk. Uh, I went to her home, all of those things so that she had that trust in me. Uh, and then when I took my crew, I was very selective of who were the people I wanted around her so that she felt safe, so that she didn't feel that, you know, we were there to cause harm to her. And then eventually we had the story. And while, you know, I was actually talking to her, I was very sure of the fact that I didn't want the story to be 
a sob story of a nude model. I didn't want it to come from that space of a need. I didn't want that choice to be shown as, a, you know, a choice made in helplessness. I wanted, because she sounded confident about what she did. She was happy and respectful of the job she did. Her family was happy and respectful of what she did. There was no way I would have remolded it into something that was, you know, that, that, that was something that could be looked down upon. Uh, I thought she was a very strong woman. I thought uh, with the background that she had and whatever she had faced in her life, she had made very strong choices. So I wanted to maintain that perspective in the film. So uh, I don't think we have time to actually show the whole of the film, but you know, if you look at this film, when I'm revealing, so this is again perspective in, and how it unfolds in a narrative. When I'm revealing her character, when I'm revealing pockets of her character that, you know, she is a loving wife. She is also a mother. She is a woman who wants to have an individual, uh, 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 an individual voice of her own. You reveal her in bits and parts. So you see her hands, you see her legs, you see her taking her clothes off through, through foregrounds, uh, through people, through canvases. You're not staring blank at her because then as the narrative is unfolding, she slowly opens up, right? So even in visuals, you see that slowly opening up. You see that you're not being able to look at her directly. And that's the tension that you're building up that, you know, I only see parts of her. I only see her on the sketches. I only see her through sh other foregrounds and things. And then when she establishes herself as this lady who is strong, who's, who like sits upright in front of this uh, class of students who look at her and sketch her, uh, who literally like look at every part of her body and, you know, observe and make it, you know, and she sits there in a long shot, standing strong and, you know, like, and we've given it like a low angle sort of a, an appeal so that she rises like this, this, this strong woman uh, who's out there naked in the world and not ashamed of it. Uh, so this is, this is what perspective does. Uh, perspective in terms of your storyline, in what I choose to talk to her, how I choose to edit what she's telling me, uh, what is the tonality? Because the same, the same words can be actually made into, you know, a sob narrative, and the same words can actually become a story, a very strong story. Uh, so that's about perspective. I think we're a little short on time here. Um, I will move forward. Uh, Bablin, uh, I think yeah. these links can possibly be shared with them later sure. if they want to take a look. Yeah. Uh, oh. Let's talk about building a narrative. Now, now that we're talking about narrative, right? Uh, building a narrative. There is something really interesting here. I was reading from this marketer. His name is Max. Uh, so he says that, uh, and, and there's this little piece I was reading where he talks about that, he, you know, he joins the TV industry and he's working with Discovery and uh, he doesn't like, you know, but he, he, he feels my calling is somewhere else. And one fine day he moves to doing what he does and now he's a marketer. So, uh, and this is the narrative he built. So somebody who asks him that, you know, um, what was that one moment in your life, you know, when things changed? Uh, when you were enlightened that I didn't want to do what I'm doing. So he says, and this is what he says, I've put the quotes there. I'll tell you exactly when it was. I was working on a school for the discovery, uh, on a shoot for the discovery channel. And a part of the set was this, and a part of the set was this carcass of a dead cow. It smelled to high heaven. I was a lowly production assistant. So after the filming was over, it was my job to ride in a van with this stinky rotten mass of flesh. Wasps filled the air and I could barely breathe. That's when I said to myself, maybe this is not going to work out, right? So we don't know who Max is. Uh, it's possibly, we just know him through these five sentences that I shared. But these five sentences now uh, make us have a certain idea of who Max is, right? Mm, what is that idea? Uh, Probably let's move on to the next slide. And this is like an experiment that was done. And I want to actually take you through this experiment so you get the sense of what narrative does. So a lot of people who heard this actually said, and who, you know, like you and I didn't know Max, uh, said that I feel like I can trust him more. Somebody said that I know that Max is someone who's not afraid to change course when things truly aren't working. He's not somebody who just gave up. Somebody said, I can't explain it, but he seems more creative now. 
Uh, had Max just said, no, I just didn't like it in Discovery and I moved. Are these the things we could have understood about Max? Are these the things we could have uh, perceived about his character, his nature? No, right? Uh, so that is what the essential part of your narrative is. Your narrative, uh, when you're telling a story, you're always making this choice between two narrative modes. One is a scene, one is a summary. Uh, Max saying here, whatever he said, is a summary. And Max could have said, uh, I didn't like being in Discovery, so I left. That would have, uh, that would have been a summary. What's here is a scene. Uh, another example of this would be, you know, saying, I took the cold keys out of my pocket, pressed the automatic unlock button, heard the door snap open. What is this? It's a scene. You can visualize, think of everything that's happening. Versus somebody saying, I drove to work. That is what essentially the narrative of your storytelling is. And this is very important, especially when you're pitching to brands. When you're out with an idea to pitch it to somebody. Uh, how articulate, how detailed can you be about the things you want to say? Even in visualizing your narrative, even in uh, the films that you're making, uh, let's say, just take an example of, you know, and these are things like I would do as a child, you know, uh, being just more observant. Uh, there is, uh, let's say, a plant, you know, all of you at home, perhaps some of you must be like growing plants and all. There is a plant you've grown and it just gets its first flower. Uh, notice how you look at that flower, uh, how you hold that flower, how you talk about that plant you've just grown to somebody else. There is going to be a difference versus a plant you get from a, a flower shop, uh, you know, a flower you get from a flower shop. There is so, you know, same kind of situations, but the detailing of how you talk, how you hold, how you say, uh, what is the movement in the body, what is the perspective. Those are the things that make your story get a life. And these are, these are the things which are very important for brand storytelling, because ultimately what you're talking is you're talking the story of the customer. You're talking to the people and about them, right? And you're just bringing in your product into their life by saying that, hey, this is your life, but this is how my product is significant here. Um, so now what we're going to do is, um, we're going to be looking at, and this is, I'm completely giving you now a very, um, industry perspective of how brand storytelling really works. What are the steps to it? Uh, usually, uh, the first thing that happens is you get a brief from a brand, right? Uh, so who are the people making brand stories right now? There are production houses, there are media agencies in the middle. Um, these are the people who are in touch with, there are agencies that are in touch with um, the clients who give them certain briefs and then the agencies kind of make a strategy around that and look out for video produ uh, for production houses that build the same. A lot, of, um, a lot of media agencies actually have their own production houses as well. Um, so what usually happens is, let's say, and we'll, we'll go example wise for this so that you know you get a sense of what I'm trying to say. There is a brief that comes, okay? Uh, let's pick up Father's Day. Father's Day is something that's happening next month, around the 21st of June. So you get a brief from a client. Um, my client says that, uh, okay, Father's Day is coming up next month. I have to, uh, I want to do a small digital film. Um, and yeah, and, and I, I want to just possibly celebrate um, fatherhood at this point in terms that, you know, fathers are in the houses. That I want to see that side of it. Obviously, it's a brand. It would just, and, and, and I want to talk about how significant um, my health insurance plan is in the middle of all this. Because let's be real, brands are like that, right? A health insurance brand will come up to you and say, give me a nice Father's Day story. And I am a health insurance brand. I need to be significant in the middle of all this. Um, Okay, so you get this brand. Now, what is your first step to this? You've, you've understood there is a lot of times, you know, your budget allocation also comes with it, that this is the bracket. So that you can think of, oh, do I need to think something really premium? Do I need to move this into a certain different format space, etc. Uh, 
the first few questions you need to ask if they've not been answered already is get a sense if it's a new brand right get a sense of the brand tonality like we said right we know how a pepsi is different than a coke we know how a soft excel is different than an Ariel. uh the values what we had just discussed so what are the brand values what are the things that they stand for these are the first things you need to understand is this a progressive brand is this a regressive brand is this a brand that doesn't like to take stand but just say things is this brand is this a brand that likes to talk about people a lot uh does this give is this brand very solution oriented and what it wants it wants to say those are the kind of questions okay what they stand for what are the values next question who is this brand talking to is a health insurance brand talking to a 15 year old guy no not at all is a health insurance brand talking to a 35 year old housewife perhaps not uh then who is it talking to ask those questions or you know try to answer them in your own head before you move on to an idea mm, it's perhaps talking to it's obviously talking to fathers it's obviously talking to uh fathers with families who can buy family insurances right so you have one bracket set maybe fathers between the age of 30 to 55 60 or above who take health insurances every day so you get one slot who did be talking to anyone else uh perhaps a health insurance brand can also now talk to a 25 26 year old person who has begun earning and can take care of the health insurance of his father uh or the health insurance of his own family then you have another uh target audience there that you know these are the two people who will be buying health insurances younger parents um, uh, uh, the father and the kids who are now earning so that's you you've got your answers here now you move on to insight what is an insight insight in terms of branded content inside is the most important part that is what makes your story work or not work what is an insight insight is this close reading of your consumer close reading of what they are firstly who they are what their aspirations are what they do what do they think what is their problem how are they seeking solutions to that problem do i fit in anywhere in the middle of all this uh do i fit in in a story that they are living every day so let's say for father's day this health insurance brand okay we have insights now now let's see what are the kind of insights we have our first insight is that oh uh in the last two months it's happened for the first time that fathers are actually at home and children are getting to see their fathers beyond you know beyond uh the early morning and the late night hours they're getting to see for the first time what their fathers do in the afternoon do fathers like to take afternoon naps uh does my dad like movies uh what is he doing is he health conscious what does he do those are the answers a lot of us must have found when our fathers actually stayed back this time at home and we saw them you know in a more uh in, in a more close manner than ever before um that is one of the insights uh the second insight could be that uh, hey I, i'm i'm away from my parents for the first time and i am realizing that oh my god health is such an important thing and my father has been taking up all the responsibilities of the house or oh, i am also somebody who's earning should it be my responsibility not to at least take care of the small thing of paying a health insurance every year for him that is also an insight because your consumer is also thinking that so let's say a lot of people actually a lot of youngsters actually move to taking health insurances for their mom for their mom and dad uh, a lot of fathers because they spent so much time at home realized that family was so much more or there was it was so much more important to actually stick a, stay with them and feel these little moments of happiness so these are the kind of insights that you build on okay um one insight could be um that you know and and this is actually something uh really that and this is how you you know you bring in insights which make you think a little differently uh we are all people who love um these uh watching these baby fail kind of videos right uh and you just and 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 dads are often like if you see like dads are often the saviors you have like some million million views on videos where dad is saving a baby from a certain kind of a fail and all of this uh baby fail is your insight that oh, people are watching a lot of baby fail videos uh and you have to bring in the father element to it okay and and 
so these are the kind of insights now we're talking about three different insights we have here now let's see how we move that into a concept uh the insight what it really requires at an everyday basis is empathy you will feel your consumer when you are actually empathizing with them when you're looking at their situation and thinking oh dear this is me when you even if you know you do not belong to that certain strata of society you do not belong to that certain target audience but you need to really feel your audience you need to really think what they're thinking you really need to be a part of their aspiration their failures their their choices that is when you get into that fold of telling of putting your brand in that uh, space so insight becomes very important now i have insights of fathers are having fun time at home with their kids i have insight of um my father is getting old and is away uh, i perhaps also have insight about uh, my father has just retired uh, you know fathers so there was an, an interesting insight because i was lately working on something like this an interesting insight i found that people that men when get retired because of the kind of life we have in india you know which is a very run of the mill life they're only finishing up responsibilities and all of that suddenly when they retire there is a lull because the children have grown up and are independent uh and studies show that there is a um that that they actually within 2 years of getting retired they actually have diseases that they never had before uh they get in they have anxiety depression or uh, the mental health takes back seat so that is an insight right now how do i build on that insight now comes my that which is where the concept comes in now i know that these are the truths of society these are the truths of my consumers how do how am i building a story around this truth so now you bring in the concept the concept also has the value of your brand how is my brand going to be coming in here so let's say we have a thought of um the first idea that we were discussing or the first insight of fathers are at home and having a good time with kids so now you add on add to this thought and you say that your concept becomes that maybe you are going to be showing um the great moments the fathers are having with their kids um at home and you're going to be building on um you know um and you're going to be building on these amazing moments that when you were home made your made your family uh not feel worried at all even in the most worried times because you were there you made it easy your presence made it easy that's why such fun that's such fun time in the family happened that is your concept okay uh so to safeguard these moments forever by your um you know or health insurance you kind of slip in the idea of health insurance there to safeguard these moments forever with xyz health insurance that is how your concept comes into play uh with somebody like um you know where you're talking about maybe it's time for the kids to take care of their fathers you play on the concept of something like father say so many things to us when we are growing up is it you know this they ask us things like why don't you do this in routine or why don't you do this for an hour is it the time to ask my dad the same questions which he asked me as a child um so that becomes your concept right um baby fail videos that we were talking about there are baby fail videos okay amazing they look great how do i add a concept to it maybe i think that um okay babies always do things which you know which make them fail or babies don't always know how to take a right decision but you do so suddenly you bring in the important significance of a father in that child's life who's doing all of those baby fails and then they say you know the right decision you are responsible and then so that becomes your concept and the right decision could be which is where your product comes in your right decision is my brand your right decision is getting a health insurance so those those this is how you plant uh, a product in between the life of your customer then you move on to the treatment now these treatments could be considering i mean i'm going to get into how we're talking about covid now considering you're getting into this covid situation where you're not being able to shoot uh a lot of authenticity in films have come in now right you know most of the digital films you see so many people actually um, shooting their own home videos and sending out a lot of brands are actually compiling all of this and sending uh so your treatments could be user generated videos it could be a 2d video it could be poetry with photographs and stock shots then you select how you want to communicate this idea how i want to communicate this idea about 
I have to ask my dad the same questions that he asked me. Do I do it through photographs of children and fathers uh, and move that into, you know, fathers getting older and children noticing? So that is where you need to fit. Can this be done in a simple 2D animation? Um, so these are the things you have to think. Then you move on to the script. So there is one stage usually when you send in your insight concept and treatment to the client, you get a feedback on the same. Uh, they say which, if there are ideas they like, something that works for them. Usually at this stage, you send a treatment reference, which is any other film that you have seen or, you know, anything that is close to what you're thinking. There are a lot of times that is not. Uh, so you just have to write a treatment note more properly so that they can understand what you're trying to say. Um, and then when you kind of have a structure and approval on that, you move on to the script stage, uh, wherein you bring in your dialogues, you bring in the, you know, the kind of narrative you want, you bring in, and you move that into an audiovisual format, wherein you're writing the audio and visual in the script, where you're figuring out your shots and so on and so forth. The rest of the um, process is like the usual film process. Um, so, yeah. Uh, so this is the usual process you follow, right? You get approval at every stage and you keep moving forward. After the script is approved, there is a whole um, pre-production uh, deck that goes, um, which it's, it's a complete PowerPoint sort of a presentation where you have everything from why this idea to what your concept is, to why that works, to what every line is going to look like. Often um, you have storyboards with it, which you get sketched. Or if you not storyboards, you have mood boards with it, which are essentially pictures, which are somewhere close in terms of mood to what you want to shoot. Uh, all of that goes, so everything is one set on paper is then when you move on to uh, shooting of the same. Moving on to the three bundle. Now, so this is what the uh, process is, right? Now, after that, we'll, we'll talk to, we'll talk about what are the three essential things that you need to th remember when you're talking about brand storytelling. Uh, first, is, and I'll quickly give you examples because I feel you must have possibly seen these things. Now, there are a hundred lot of brands there, right? Everyone is saying something or the other. I think on an everyday basis, around 50 different films get released. Uh, how are you being different? Um, and the answer lies in your insight. The answer lies in how you marry the insight with your concept. Um, what is it that you're observing about people? Like imagine the Axis Bank video that we saw. It's such an interesting insight that mothers love the kids' name so much that they make it their password. Very interesting insight, right? So these are the kind of insights that you need to find. What you And how that happens is when you're very observant. Very observant about every kind of person you meet and see how are they different. Because see, you may have, you know, as a storyteller who's not working for brands, you may have a choice of, I like these kind of films, so I'm only going to be uh talking or be around certain kind of people but when you're talking brand stories most of the time your content is going out to the world uh you are not deciding but they are deciding if they have to see this so you have to make it for them uh to make it for them you need to know them to need to know them you need to observe uh them so even if it is you know um you know a, a, a woman who likes to really dress up quite a lot but and 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 doesn't quite understand and, and, and is not great at expressing herself, is just as important as someone else who is a great athlete and, you know, has a hundred stories to tell about himself. Um, so every, every character is important. Now, in a sea of seamless, be unforgettable. Uh, that is one of your mantras. Now, I'll give you some examples. If you remember last to last year, there was a film that had been done by HP, uh, which was on Maki Diwali. Now, again, a very interesting insight. Uh, Simple thing that you have so many DR sellers around the house. I'm not sure if you guys remember the film. Um, I mean, if you do, uh, it'll be great if you can hear. Otherwise, we could just play this film for you all. Mm, so this film was essentially about this DR sellers who you have, you know, right before Diwali, um, on the road, sitting on the sides. Uh, and how nobody really pays attention because, oh, we are more prone to buying DRs from uh, shops and uh, showrooms, etc. So this insight is where, and then they through, do this with the, and they bring in the idea of this innocence of this child who looks at this uh, woman and, you know, that is the insight. And then from there, it just becomes this very interesting um, ad. I am not sure if any of you is saying anything. 
uh, okay so yeah so uh, so and something like a policy bazaar ad if i'm not wrong yeah where you have um, this guy who is this deaf guy in a you know in the wedding of his father he's a dumb guy in the wedding of his uh, dad uh, of his brother talking about um how his brother made him what he is really i mean you you're talking about policy bazaar or something which has nothing to do with that space but just how that insight of uh you know this brotherhood is something that they escalate into such a big narrative um or all out ad if you remember of the time so all out also played on a very interesting insight at that point uh if you remember that ad which is this dining table ad of this mother scolding this little baby and uh, you know everyone in the family is very against the mother that she's being so strict with the child and then the father of the family the grandfather of the family actually stands up and says no no uh, what she's doing is right he's stolen the 10 rupee note and she has all the right to be strict the insight was that uh women in india were very scared of being strict mothers 75% in, in 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 people in india thought that strict mothers were not really a good thing mothers needed to be soft they needed to be uh empathetic and nice and all of that um and not be harsh on their kids when there was a need to be so all out actually took a spin on that and uh went ahead and said that you know it's good to be strong uh for the right things to happen and connected that emotion to their brand because all out is strong on the mosquitoes uh so again how do you try to build uh this right so that is one of the things that how what insight you pick up and how you kind of build your brand narrative around it that you become somebody who is unforgettable and these are all the ads you remember most of the times perhaps you guys may not even remember what these brands were but you would remember when i'm talking stories um second thing that you need to be very cautious of is the fact that more than customers you need to build a tribe somebody who does it very beautifully is red bull or uh, is levis there are com- is royal enfield they have communities of followers um you know who feel who stand by the value of these brands who are what these brands are so uh, levis has done uh, some series right now again i mean i'm not sure if i can really play this because i think they're running short on time but i think you guys can access this and take a look levis has come across uh, come up with uh, this certain campaign right now which is completely on pride and they have taken icons you know who stand uh, who are mostly uh, who are from the lgbtq community so um yeah bobin i just saw uh, your message i think we'll be opening for questions very soon yeah so they so you know bring up icons who stand for your value um so that your values actually bring together a tribe that goes with you um and we're talking about and the third mantra is that be profitable and be human um what we're essentially saying is that uh, when you are talking to people or uh, talking away that through your stories that you know you're doing something human like the way i gave you the examples of microsoft and apple they work for us not because also i mean sure because of the product but also because of how there is trust in how they speak uh in just the kind of innovation apple shows in its own ads um you know when you are human you on your own you solve the idea of people connecting and trusting uh you for the same so so essentially these are the three things that you know you need to be really mindful of when you are really making a brand narrative uh quickly looking at the formats that you have when you're making uh things for brands one of course is your live shot uh the others are gfx 2d motions uh let's quickly look at you know these kind of formats so live shot videos are uh bubbly we'll quickly go through the kind of format so that they get a sense of every format yeah live shot videos uh most of the videos that you see they are shoot based videos they can be fiction or non fiction uh accompanied by you know a song poetry dialogue voice over led uh they require a larger crew there is an average turn around of 20 days to 60 days from the point you start with the brief to the time you deliver the master in terms of the budgets well these are the most high budgeted sort of films where you have to consider money for the cast set crew equipment edit music recce rehearsals the policy bazaar ad that i was talking about was is here in the thumbnail on the top 
So if you want to take a look or if you've forgotten, I think you'd remember this. Um, creative benefits obviously are the most, they're the most authentic, emotive, most expressive kind of videos where you can recreate exactly what you want to see, right? Uh, moving on to GFX videos, but sadly, given the current situation right now, this is something that is not working as much. Uh, moving on to GFX videos, which is one of the formats, which is really interesting. Uh, you use pictures, cinema graphs, or stock footage for the same, or with text or voiceover on it. It requires lesser crew, obviously. Uh, it's mostly people on the editor table and the creative. Uh, average turnaround time would be around two weeks. Uh, there is, so Fexel has done something really similar um, on this ground, which is a cinema graph uh, lately. Um, and yeah, you guys should take a look at it. It's an interesting film that they've done, which is just using pictures because now you're not shooting. So how do you really communicate? So, you know, they use pictures, they bring in voiceover, they bring in uh, text to say what they want to say. Moving on to 2D videos. This is a hit with brands. Every brand wants to do a 2D video somewhere or the other because a lot of the times brands are actually talking about, especially BFSI brands, right, which are talking mostly your banks and finance. Um, they have, or, or phones for that matter, a lot of unboxing, a lot of, oh, this app has come in, a lot of explainer videos to do. Uh, this format works very well out there. Um, so you can have a character animation, you can have vector. Like this is something that brands are doing at every possible day in bulk. Uh, here, obviously, you need a motion graphics artist. You need an animator. You obviously need a script and a director for the same who can conceptualize and put this together. Um, it's, it's faster. This is something that's really working ever since COVID has hit because you don't really have to move around too much for it. And you can just think things and do it, right? Um, so this is one of the formats This is that, that's really working. 3D videos, something very popular with whenever a new gadget launch happens, be it a phone, um, you know, like something like, these are all videos, guys. So if you want to later possibly see them, you could take a look. Mostly gadget videos are all, so most of the Apple ads or MI or Vivo ads or Xiaomi ads you see are all 3D videos. Uh, there are also obviously 3D cartoons and things like that, but mostly in the brand space, 3D works very well when you're recreating um, gadget specifications, insides of a processor, et cetera. Um, this is obviously uh, a little more expensive because you need, a, you need a sketch artist, you need an animator, you need a 3D artist, you need a voiceover, edit, and music, all of that put together. Creative benefits, obviously, it's, it adds a dimension to what you're seeing. It's closer to reality. Uh, so something like, uh, for, for something like gadgets, for something like things that you can't really shoot, uh, you know, how a processor works, how micro things work, Something like this in a three-dimension space really works well. Um, then something really popular these days is user-generated content. If you go onto the pages of uh, Oreo, uh, Maggie, and you know, like you name the brand and they've done it, uh, Mother Dairy, they've all done user-generated content. So what they're usually doing is, you know, asking their users to shoot at home. Even we, I mean, uh, we've also been actually shooting quite a lot of videos where we're getting people, getting users to give us footage of what they're doing, what's happening, and putting that together. This is a very popular format right now. It's very authentic. It's just giving a new, interesting dimension uh, to things. This one particular one that I put here is a Nivea ad. Um, so yeah, this is something that's very popular. Uh, people are really connecting with their audience with things like this. Um, and moving it into you know different kind of stories. Somebody's talking about having a good time. Somebody's talking about hey, it's time to sit down and have conversations. Somebody's talking about, oh, this time we'll go preserve it. Uh, somebody's talking about, I learned so much about my family being together. So just different takes on same situations. Uh, and then you have very interesting format that's coming in, which is playable ads. Uh, this one is particularly something that I would like you to watch when you go back. Uh, it's very interactive ever since I think Netflix, Netflix Bandersnatch came in. Uh, you know, brands started thinking about how uh, you could get interactive with your audience. And uh, yeah, this one turned out to be a very interesting one. So what people are doing is this particular Samsung ad is actually an interactive ad where you can choose where you want to take forward the story. And it moves you and it's an Instagram ad. So you actually move this from one story page to another and it, you know, the narrative moves forward and Samsung is very seamlessly um, integrated. Here. Uh, next one that you have is AR production. AR production 
uh, which is augmented reality is very popular it's gaining like these are the formats which are coming up because two day live shoot all of that was there brands are opening up to these new possibilities of these new kinds that are coming in augmented reality is obviously something that takes time we have companies in india who are working around augmented reality who are making a simple example of this would be you know the facebook and snapchat filters that you use uh, brands are getting into that space so if you see there is this alive now this organization in bangalore that does this for facebook and you know you have brands like flipkart where you can actually uh, you know they've created filters where you can uh, try your lipstick shades uh, before buying them uh, something like a chocolate eclair uh, where you can uh, shoot the bomb bursting on your head the way they usually have in this in the in the ads that are running so this is again another kind of storytelling when you where you bring in your audience to be participative in the story you want to say uh these are some interesting kind of stories that we have um storytelling you now one thing that's very important and i want to tell you this and leave you with this thought because this is where we are in the field of storytelling at this point uh storytelling uh right now for brands is going through a major shift in terms of how you want to say things um there is a major issue and and you know because you're so open to consumer response at this point it's not like 10 years or 12 years ago that you put out an ad and you know you just were happy about the trps you get criticized if you go a step wrong um so um at this point brands are very cautious of the fact that they need to be with the audience they need to empathize with the audience they need to hold the audience by the hand and show them the optimistic side they instead of saying that oh now you're at a problem there is a pandemic here this is what my product is to save you from it uh this is one narrative that we are actually fighting with brands for that this is not how it needs to be communicated to the audience at this point empathy is the need of the hour brands have to be very careful of what they are saying they need to acknowledge the disruption actually acknowledging disruption was something that was still happening last month when covid was new now we have moved on to a stage where we are, where we are, the brand narratives are changing into hey now if you are moving on to the new normal how are things changing around the same uh what are we doing differently you know uh how are you opening up to the new normal uh be more optimistic about what's coming your way because this is what it is what now uh second thing that needs to be very important at this point about brands is you need to be yourself uh so lead with empathy when i say uh Nike has done this beautiful ad, uh, and again, I mean, I'm, I'm, we're really short on time, so I would like you guys to see it. Where it, so Nike is usually talking about, you know, find your greatness or um, getting out, ex, you know, exploring, being an athlete, running, all of that. This time, they're saying that um, in this particular ad, that even in staying indoors, you're a champion. And what they're showing is that you know, all of these people are actually working out in their homes. they doing whatever they're doing in their houses and this is a user generated content video but very beautifully very the value presented is done so beautifully uh second thing is be yourself uh even though the times are tough right now you need to still stick to what you have always been for people uh right uh if your brand now what we need to think right now in terms of brand storytelling is if my brand was a person at this point what would it say to my consumer uh would it say that no oh, no you need to um you know use my product or would it say that hey i feel you but you know this is what is there um so what a lot of brands are doing very interestingly at this point are they are giving a spin to something that you know them for asian paints is something that we've always known as har ghar kuch kehta hai right so taking on that phrase of har ghar kuch kehta hai they have actually uh, rephrased it into this very beautiful ad um where they are talking about uh har ghar chup chap se ye kehta hai ki uh aajkal andar bahut uh aajkal koi andar bahut rehta hai and then they actually build on to talk about um and i'm sure you must have these were one of the first few ads that had come in uh when covid hit so very beautifully again on a already established narrative they adapt to the situation and they celebrate people living inside the house uh the second they've done two films the second film actually talks about how uh, you are beautifying the house now that you are inside you're cleaning corners 
you are looking at, oh, this mirror has not been cleaned for so many years or whatsoever. Uh, so the house is actually talking those things. So again, you know, giving you a positive uh, feel to life at this point. Third thing is through your communication in times of COVID, how do you add value to your customer's life? Uh, at this point, your customer is already feeling uh, the hit of the pandemic. He's at home, perhaps at a pay cut, uh, you know, already surrounded by a lot of problems. As a brand, how do you still communicate with your consumer? Do you show support? Do you give a tool to help you to help your consumer thrive in a new reality? How are you doing that through your story? Uh, something that Dettol did very interestingly at this point was, and Dettol and Liveboy actually both, uh, Dettol, you know, comes up with, just gives you this thought about, oh, you know, um, if I wash my hands, this is what happens to the, to the, uh, the, the kitanu around me. So they run away. There is this small ad they've done with the kids that the kid uh, puts his finger on the uh, soap and then puts it inside and, you know, all the dust just goes away and he realizes that, oh, this. Liveboy has given you 20 seconds of hand washing is important. Liveboy comes up with a 20 second song that you can sing while uh, washing your hands. So uh, Vivo comes up with something, uh, that, you know, who talks about the frontline workers and in the end says that, oh, we're going to give some part of it to uh, help them. Um, so, you know, what are the things? How are you being bringing solution to people uh, through your stories at this point? Because selling is obviously not what your consumer is looking at. Your consumer is looking at empathy. Your consumer is looking at deriving a story of strength at this point. So, st storytelling that way has gone uh, quite a lot of change for brands at this point in terms of how you're talking to your consumer. Uh, I think we should open up to questions now and I could just take. Right. I'm stopping sharing my screen. Yeah. Yes, uh, we are open to questions now. So many things to think about. And I will share all these links with all the students and all the participants. You can look the ads, you can go through the points, those which we could not watch here, which Madashi just talked about. So you can go through those links. Uh, hi, Bablin, ma'am. Uh, this is Preksha. Can I go ahead with my question? Sure, go ahead. Uh, hi, ma'am. Uh, first of all, thanks a lot for the wonderful presentation and the insightful discussion. So uh, I wanted to ask you, uh, this is Preksha. I am a third year student at the Department for Journalism. And I wanted to ask you that um, when you talk about this uh, shift in advertising or storytelling, from mm -hmm. uh, you know telling uh, um, selling the brand to selling a story hmm. in all these examples you said why do you think that uh, this kind of a transition was required and what triggered this in the industry um you're talking about in terms of covid or in terms of how storytelling no. has changed over the years the general like uh, at one point in time i'm sure as we're talking uh, there are a lot so, of ads that we see now Sorry, uh, selling stories. So I just mean from the start, not from okay. the Okay. So see, a lot of things had a role to play here. Earlier, when we were talking about something like the early 90s, the first, the first and the most primary thing was that your platforms for con consuming this content uh, became a lot more wide. Uh, earlier, brands had a simple way of, you know, going, buying a certain slot with a, with a, new, with a channel getting a 30 second or a one minute slot and saying their story there. There was no other means of communication apart from the print ads. There was no other means of audio visual storytelling. Uh, with the coming in of the internet, uh, brands had that freedom to build their own pages, to get a direct following of customers and consumers and, you know, and not be actually um, limited to certain time frames or certain ads that they could win. Usually when, when, it was the early 90s, a brand would only be, uh, you know, possibly making two or one commercial film a year. And that is all that would be there, one or two commercial films and, you know, 30 seconders or a minute or, and that was the only communication you heard from them. Whereas now, um, every topical day, every topical opportunity, be it your Independence Day to your Father's Day, a brand, the brand has a platform to communicate and a story to say and a wide range of audience to be actually looking and responding to it 
uh, in a much more bigger manner. Uh, so, you know, so that in itself has changed the way story needs to be told. Um, uh, an access bank or a surf Excel can't go on saying that, you know, buy my detergent because it's, because whatever, I have added this new certain element to it. It needs to be in, it needs to be recalled by the customer through the stories it's saying. Because now there is, because this customer is consuming a lot of other content. On everyday basis, just think of the amount of ads you watch or think of the amount of, you know, videos you watch on um, your Facebook, Instagram or otherwise. Uh, so when you're consuming so much, somebody telling you that buy this is not going to work with you. Your audience is more intelligent. Your audience is more interactive. What's going to work with them is how you make them feel. Uh, how you make them feel for that one minute that you have uh, through your storytelling. Or maybe more because when you're talking digitally, you can actually just go on. But you have a minute now because, you know, as audience, we have a very small attention span. So we'll move on if it doesn't hit well with us. Um, so that's why the storytelling has kind of completely moved because to hold the audience uh, with different kind of stories has become more important because that will increase your brand visibility. Uh, that will make them remember you. Uh, their platforms are a lot more open. So seeing the same thing is not going to work. That's why you've got to find different ways of talking to people so that they remember you. Thank you so much for the response, ma'am. Thank you, Mrigashree. So what are, are there more questions uh, about the art of storytelling, about what you thought through, what you felt by listening to the examples shared by Mrigashree? Yeah, ma'am, I have a question here, Jagrati Desaid. Yes, Jagrati. Uh, ma'am, uh, whatever we have discussed up till now, we were talking about stories uh, with a pro the products that are associated with the consumer, which we are directly consuming. So if suppose a person belongs to an industry, which is a producing industry for suppose, if I state here, uh, the advertising agency wants to portray story. So how would that person do that when the thing is not directly consumed by the producer? Okay. Uh, no, so see, what you need to, what we need to think of is that everything that has a manufacturing unit or a business here is present because there is somebody who is consuming it directly or indirectly somewhere around, right? If there is, let's say we have companies, like there are companies that we work for, something like a cane. Cane is a company that, um, you know, deals in oils. They take oils out from the oil refineries and things like that. Uh, and, and there are times that we've got to work for companies like that, which we generally don't really associate with because this is not like edible food oil that we're talking, but, but things that we don't directly consume. Now, what you have to see is how the importance, you know, the presence of that certain company is making a difference to your consumer's life. Is this for the kind of employment it's giving to the people? That becomes one of the stories. Is this because the oil is produced and, you know, it gets onto your, um, vehicles and today you're being able to have this journey because somewhere uh, many seas away there is some person who's ensuring that the certain machinery is working fine uh, in the cane company uh, so you have to find those connections even though you know you've got to because what you need to understand like i said is that every company exists for a reason uh, it connects to the consumer indirectly somewhere or the other that's the thread you need to find um, you know, through connections, through a certain storyline. And then you need to connect to it. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Right, so are there more questions on the minds of the participants? Uh, yes, good evening, ma'am, Manaswini here. Yes, Manaswini. Manaswini. Uh, ma'am, I wanted to ask you like, so since everything is, you know, rapidly changing, how does the future of the, like, what does the future of the industry looks like right now like for us like we are now in our final year and hmm. like if we have we are looking forward to go into the field of ad and pr what should we hmm. keep in our mind right now while going into that field i think uh, so see even though you know we are facing a pandemic and there are people are going through crisis but nobody wants to not hear a story I think the, the, the thought of storytelling will always go 
go on. In fact, as we are indoors, we're consuming more stories than ever. Uh, in terms of where the future of advertising and filmmaking is, um, it's challenging at this point because now it's time for us to look at what more can be done. Uh, if a shoot, if a 70, 100, 150 people shoot is not possible, it's not like the stories can't be told. Uh, it's challenging for us to figure out how something as impactful can still be made. So we are actually, I mean, this is something I'm personally telling you, that, you know, we are in that lookout of how a story can be told the way it was never told before. Uh, every little element, be it animation to somebody's personal photographs, to just creating something that can be done while you're sitting indoors and not getting out. Uh, because, um, see, working in an agency, I can tell you the work is not less. Uh, brands still want to say a lot of things. In fact, if you are actually, if you follow a few brands or, you know, you follow, considering you're saying you're a, um, you know, you, you, you want to get into PR, ad PR in future, there are a lot of pages that you have that keep giving you a lot of brand ads out. There are a lot of films getting created in this period uh, because every brand wants to come forward and say their thing. Every brand has a certain new thing to say. Um, so the work is always, what's going to be interesting now is that a lot of new formats are going to be coming in. Uh, even the shoots go down, you know, uh, augmented reality, augmented reality, interactive kind of, uh, that's why I give you the examples of those kind of formats. You know, interactive storytelling, uh, graphics, um, 2D and 3D kind of filmmaking, or cinema graphs, stop. All of this is going to user-generated content. Uh, if you actually see right now, there is so much of user-generated content videos out there that brands are putting out. So all of that is pretty much going to be there. Obviously, how we went into COVID is not how we're going to get out of it. There is going to be a new normal. Uh, brands are going to be talking in a different way, and they already are. Uh, but the communication is not going to stop. The consumers want to hear stories and the brands want to put out stories. So I think we are all pretty safe there. Thank you, ma'am. You're welcome. So uh, as just mentioned by Yuki, ma'am, that this webinar will also be uploaded on DCG webinar series. And I'm sure this series of asking questions is not going to stop. We'll have a lot more questions when we look at the advertisements and the stories created by you, Mrigashtri. Uh, any last words on all these aspiring storytellers right now when they are at their homes? Uh, how can they keep um, the skills? Yeah, I think, um, you know, uh, now that all of you are home and all of you, I'm sure, have your phones with you, um, what you can really do at this point is this is a very good time to reflect. This is a very good time to write down ideas, to observe insights. I'm personally telling you, I have not stayed with my family for this long in the last 12, 13 years. And it's for the first time I've come back. And you know, the kind of insights I am getting because I belong to a hill station, the kind of conversations here, the kind of people, the neighborhoods are very different. Uh, so the kind of conversations you see, the kind of insights you get, uh, about a life which is not about run of the mill, you know, it's easier. Observe, and and it's just completely different. I'm just going to, I'm just seeing a very new perspective to, you know, to how people are living who are not in the cities, how people in small towns really live, how lives in the hills are. Um, so those kind of things, you know, just be very observant to your family discussions. Be very observant to just the light that falls on your balcony every day to how people are in the balconies around your houses, you'll find a certain pattern. You'll find stories. Maybe start shooting little things here and there. Uh, bring forward a narrative. If you're a writer, start writing. Uh, a, a very interesting exercise would be that, you know, if you have five brands that you like, um, write, do an exercise and, you know, write for them. You understand that tonality. What if you had to make a film or uh, first of Excel on Father's Day? What would that be like? What kind of things would you uh, would you want to say? Or just write down insights. I think the best thing that to start with is write down insights. What are the things you're feeling? Uh, what are the observations? Read a lot of articles on people, on trends. Uh, what are people thinking? What are the studies made on human behavior? Those are the things that lead you to understanding people, that lead you to talking to those people and saying stories about them. 
Okay. So, uh, thank you so much, Mirashi. I know, I know you had one hour, but somehow when we delve into this world yeah, of sharing, just kind of, I got carried away. By <laughs> but the passion the stories, was talking, but then, yeah. yeah, it did more than the voice on the hmm. other side. So, um, I would share the links with all, and maybe you can get in touch with Ma'am on Facebook and YouTube channel and ask and discuss your questions there. So on the behalf of the entire department and students, thank you so much for joining us. Despite low bandwidth, we managed quite well. Thanks a lot. And we hope to have such more brainstorming sessions soon. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mingashi, on uh, behalf of the complete department. It was an excellent session. We will upload it on our uh, uh, web series on, uh, sorry, not web series, webinar series. And uh, uh, we really want to uh, request you if our students will come up with some questions there on your channel later. Uh, if you can take out a little time of yours and uh, answer them. If, if sure, you can. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I would, I would love to uh, because I feel that this time slot is not enough to actually, you know, talk about right. something right. as big as brand marketing because there yeah, are so many examples, so many case studies. Yeah. So I'd be I'd be happy if so responding to any of the questions. I would really recommend that people uh, that you know the students look at the videos that we have. It just kind of helps them build perspective of different kind of storytelling that we have in terms of brands. Yeah. Thank you, Mriga. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Mrigashree. Okay. Bye bye.